Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to hop on real quick and because I did my makeup. That's literally the only reason I'm recording a video today specifically because I want to take a bath. It's snowing outside, it's very cold. I cannot warm my own body, so. I wanted to hop on and talk about how to take a good history and present a baby. I'm on pediatrics right now. You can see because I have this cow badge um, and I just finished my week on nursery this week and I saw some hyperbilly babies last week and the week before. So I feel like after this experience, I have some baseline knowledge on how to take a history of a baby, which is different from taking histories from adults who can tell you everything. So I wanted to talk you through it as far as I know, that way you can have a good baseline when you start your pediatrics clerkship or when you first see a baby or a really small child on the wards. So big things, this is more, targeted to like newborn babies. Some things to note are going to be the sex of the baby. That's important for presentation. Sex of the baby, gestational age of the baby, and the format that this is presented in is usually, so let's say that the baby, the baby is born at 39 weeks and five days. So you would say 39 in five weeks is how we say it at my institution. So that would mean 39 weeks, five days. Another example, if they're born at 23 weeks and four days, you'd say 23 and four weeks, if that's helpful. So gestational age is important. The hours that they've been alive is really important, especially if this is a brand new baby. So there have been presentations where I say, this is a 14 hour old baby who such and such and such, because there are certain things that happen at 24 hours of life, at least at my institution. So um, it's important to note at least that the baby is either before or after 24 hours of life. Um, other things to note are the birth weight. So the in grams usually is how it's presented, birth weight of the baby, and then things that happened during the pregnancy. So was the pregnancy complicated? How long was it? Did mom have infections? Did the anatomy scan come back okay? Those are important things to note during the pregnancy. Things like preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, those things you'll note in the pregnancy portion. And then the birth is important as well. Were they born via C-section? This is important because a C-section versus a vaginal birth baby gives you different um, things to consider, especially if it's like a, a scheduled C-section versus a trial of labor and then a C-section. That's important as far as like GBS infection risk goes. Important for you to note those things. And so, um, for example, knowing that their C-section versus vaginal birth can help you determine the etiology of their respiratory distress. If they were born via vaginal canal, they're less likely to have things like transient tachypnea of the newborn, although they can still have it, but they're less likely to have that. But if they were born via C-section, that might be something that's a little higher in your differential or something that you consider a little bit strongly, more strongly, stronger. Those things are important to know and your attending is probably going to want to know them as well. Other things to know are gonna be the APGARs. So the APGAR score at one in five minutes of life. Pres presentation of that's gonna be like, APGARs were eight and nine. I think that's fine. Um, just like all presentations, usually you're gonna wanna do like subjective and objective. Things in your objective data are going to be things like, what are they eating? So are they breastfed? Are they expressed breast milk fed? So are they eating by bottle, but it's breast milk? Or are they formula fed? All things to note, or any combination of those things. Note what they're eating, how much they're eating, how often they're eating. So for example, in a presentation I gave of a 14 hour baby, I said there have been three episodes of feeding over the past 14 hours or during life. Um, so that sort of gives the team an idea of how much the baby's eating. Ins and outs are really important. Um, ne not necessarily like the volume that they are putting in and out, unless it's specifically being measured, but wet diapers and have they stooled are important things to consider. So in a presentation, I would say like urine times three, stool times one, or hasn't stooled in life, or three episodes of stool in life, all things to consider. And it's important to note these things because wet diapers is a really sort of like the way that you tell hydration status in a baby. So 
important to know wet diapers, sort of keep track of how much the baby's eating um, through wet diapers and also their hydration status, which is important for many, many reasons. And then the stool part is important because meconium ileus is not a thing that you want a baby to have. And if they do have a meconium ileus, you need to do something about it. So keeping track of when they've stooled is important, especially um, in like the first 24 hours, you want to have a stool. And if it doesn't happen in that time frame or a little bit after that time frame, that's when you want to start like thinking of next steps. So ins and outs, um, vitals are vital. They'll tell you this all the time. You want to know respiratory rate of that baby. Temperature of babies is really important. Were they cold? Do they need to go to the warmer? Do they have a fever? That's important, especially for newborn babies. Do they have an infection that was passed down by mom or did they get it perinatally? It's important to know that a baby has an infection because a baby doesn't have an immune system and we need to do something about it. Most institutions probably have their own protocol for a fever in a newborn or a febrile neonate. They also call them febneos. Um, a febneo has a specific workup that you need to do based on if they're well appearing or ill appearing, but there's a bunch of labs you need to draw. There's a bunch of meds you might need to give. There's a bunch of imaging that might need to be done. So important to keep track of their temperature. Other things to note, if the baby does spike a fever, but just in the chart, how was it drawn? Where was it drawn? Did they draw? Did they redraw it? Was it a real fever? Those are things to keep in mind, especially if it's like axillary, but the baby was like wrapped in a bunch of stuff and they were kind of hot. And now they have this like sort of rash because they were too hot. And we took the temperature at the same time. Like those are important details to know because if they have a real fever, you need to do something about it. Other things, if they have O2 sats going on, that's something to note. Um, blood pressure, they don't usually take that, I don't think, at least at my institution, that wasn't really a thing that we were necessarily reporting on. Respiratory rate, heart rate, are they tachycardic, are they bradycardic, do they have a heart block, is there some sort of reason during pregnancy that they may have developed heart problems? Cyanosis, those sorts of things are important to note. How's the baby doing? Um, a baby exam, this is something that you will have to learn from your residents or during medical school, but some things, some like exam things to work on if you're like preparing for your pediatrics rotation right now, some exam things to consider learning about are going to be the Fontenelle exam. And so babies have like, um, sort of like open, not open, but their bones aren't where they're at when you're an adult and so you can feel like soft spots and so being able to feel the soft spots those would be fontanelles open and soft um, it's also if it's wrong you can see wrong overriding sutures is a common finding it just means that the bones are overlapping you can sometimes see this um, but the head exam is important you can also see cephalohematomas especially if the baby is born um, with vacuum assist or forceps assist and that puts a baby at risk of hyperbilirubinemia which is something you'll learn about and so noting cephalohematomas is really important um, the red reflex being present in both eyes is something you'll have to learn to do, which is kind of hard, especially on a sleeping baby. I've seen people hold the babies either in one arm or two arms. I am not brave enough to do it in one arm, but like to like do this with them to get them to open their eyes. But I, I just put gloves on and like, meep, like, like pry their eyes open to look and see the red reflex with the light. That is an art. It is not something I'm super good at, but that's something you'll have to learn to do. Checking for jaundice, um, making sure that you like have a low threshold to check for jaundice, especially in a neonate, because a lot of things can cause that and there's like pretty easy treatments for it. If you do see that um, cardiac exam, their hearts are beating super fast. So you will have to like, I would recommend like listening for a while until you can like recognize what's S1, what's S2, and then see if you hear extra sounds because their hearts are beating really fast. Um, and then lung exam, listen to it. Belly exam, I go side to side. Um, that's what I was taught to do. I don't, you can't really do quadrants in a baby. You can, but they kind of like tense up and they hate it, so. Ortlo and Bartolani are important for the hips 
testing for dysplasia and those sorts of things. So you'll have to learn that exam movement. And then also the reflexes are things you can test as well. If it's a male child, you want to check for um, like descending. How do I say this? So that I don't have to not to be unmonetized, demonetized. You just want to make sure the things that are supposed to have descended have descended so you don't have cryptorchitis, okay? So you know what that means. If you don't know what that means, it's okay. You'll find out if you need to. You also want to make sure that um, patent, those sorts of things are important for a baby exam. Cool, you wanna make sure um, that you flip the baby over, check their skin on the back, looking for any slate gray spots. Those are really important to note. You should Google that if you don't know what it is, a slate gray spot, very common in babies. Um, note that because it can look like bruises and if you don't have documentation of that and they're seen by an outside provider or they're seen in the ED and they see this big bruise, they may have concerns for child abuse when that's not really something that's happening. So make sure you document skin findings and then you also want to look for any tufts or any like sacral dimples that don't have a base or do have a base. Like just make sure that you are keeping track of sort of what's happening with their skin and if they have any spinal concerns etc. Um, that's the baby exam. As far as my advice on the baby exam is do quiet things first. Your residents will probably tell you this. So you are going to want to listen to their heart and their lungs and their belly before you do anything that's going to make them upset because you will probably make them upset, especially if you're trying to go head to toe and you're feeling around on their head. Sometimes they like that, sometimes they don't, but the minute you like pry their eyes open and shine a light in them, they're probably gonna hate you. So important for you to do quiet things first. Don't necessarily go head to toe. Like if you're gonna make the baby upset, do it after you've listened to what you need to listen to. Um, other things are don't get peed on, especially if it's a boy baby. Like if you, you, you do need to take the diaper off and like make sure that everything's going the way that it's supposed to down there. Um, but it, like be aware that you can get peed on. That's a, that's a possibility. So like keep the diaper in close proximity. Um, learn to change a diaper. If you've never changed a diaper, this is something you should learn. This is a, a skill you should have, especially if you're going to be a doctor, sort of like a common sense thing, but don't be caught unawares not knowing how to change a diaper, friends. That's, in, that's an important skill. Um, you can learn to swaddle a baby. The way I've seen it is kind of exactly the way that I make my fajitas. So um, some people will do a side, the bottom, and then another side, and you just use the baby as an anchor. Side goes like under an arm, bottom comes up, side goes over and under the baby, and that's a swaddle. And nurses and doctors will be happy to show you this, but if you come in like knowing that's something you need to learn, you may like do a quick YouTube video watch before you do it. Those are important things. Um, snuggle some babies if you're on nursery. Um, know like common presentations of common things that babies typically see like hyperbilly, breastfeeding jaundice, what workup you need to do, what are 24 hour labs, what's a light level. Those are things I learned this past couple weeks that you'll have to know to someday. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry that I went on and on, but I hope that was helpful. I spent a lot of time on the baby exam, which is something that you'll learn, but I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.